Hello, welcome back to everyone. Uh, today is going to be a little bit of a different video. Um, I'm going to talk about the month of Ramadan and fasting. I know for all of my Muslim brothers and sisters out there who might be watching this, you know, uh, Ramadan Mubarak, which is like, you know, blessings for Ramadan, the month of fasting, for those of you who aren't aware of that uh, phrasing. But uh, the month of Ramadan started um, for us here in Alberta, Canada, just on March 11th. That was my first fast. And, you know, a number of students every year kind of come up to me and people are always kind of curious, like, hey, what is Ramadan? What is fasting? You know, what are you allowed to do? What are you not allowed to do? So I figured I would make a video about that. So first, let's just start with, you know, what is Ramadan, what is this month? What what are Muslim people doing during this time? Um, so to give you a little bit of detail on that, Ramadan is the ninth month in the Islamic religious calendar. And just a little fun note, the Islamic calendar follows a lunar cycle. And so fun fact here, the lunar calendar in Islam has 12 months, but only lasts about 354 or 355 days. And the current year in the Islamic calendar is the year 1445, okay? Uh, the month of Ramadan is a month of fasting. It's a month of prayer. It's a month of reflection. And for many people, community as well, if they're particularly, you know, going out of their way, making sure that they're going to the mosque to offer those daily prayers, offer some uh, extra prayers in the nighttime as well to gain some more blessings. Okay. Ramadan lasts from the sighting of one crescent moon to another. Okay, so it's anywhere around 29 to 30 days. During this month, it is believed that the spiritual rewards are increased. So Muslims, you know, there's a hadith, a saying from the Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings of God be upon him, that, um, you know, during this month of Ramadan, the gates of heaven are open and the you know doors to hell are shut and that the demons are kind of hidden away so you know so what does that mean well you know it doesn't necessarily i don't know if it necessarily means like literal demons but you know this idea that the month of ramadan is a time where people have more access to some of that spiritual reward spiritual blessing from doing the exact same things that they necessarily might be doing any other day but the, just that, you know, while you're fasting, it's increased. And this idea that the demons are, or that the gates to hell are kind of shut is, is, you know, perhaps one of the meanings could be that, you know, it's a month where if you really set your mental intention, it's, it, it becomes a little bit more difficult to create those sins because you're so focused on that, you know, reflection, on that prayer, on that connection with God as well. <clears throat> The end of the month of Ramadan is marked by Eid al-Fitr. And if you're curious about that, I have a video of that on my channel. So maybe I'll put a link uh, down in the description for that as well. So, you know, what is fasting and why do Muslims fast? Well, let's look at why Muslims fast in the first place. Uh, fasting is one of the five pillars of Islam. The, 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 this refers to the fundamental practices that are obligatory, you know, so if you consider yourself Muslim, these are things that you, you should feel obligated to do, like, hey, I'm Muslim, I got to do these five things. And they're seen as acts of worship. So all five pillars of Islam in, you know, in order are the assertion of faith. Okay, there's a particular Arabic recitation where uh, Muslims would recite that, uh, you know, there is only one God and that Muhammad is the messenger of that God. Okay, so the assertion of faith, we have salat, right, which, which is the Arabic word for the daily prayers, and there's five of them, um, and that's obligatory upon Muslims to do that five times a day, every day, um, except for a few exemptions, you know, for their whole life. Charity to the needy is also one of the pillars of Islam. Fasting in the month of Ramadan is the fourth pillar of Islam, and observing hajj, if capable. Um, and that is pilgrimage to Mecca, Saudi Arabia, to, uh, you know, the words we used when I was growing up was to the Khana Kaaba, the house of God in Saudi Arabia and Mecca. Okay. So fasting, you know, why do we fast? Well, it's one of the pillars of Islam. It's one of our acts of worship. And it's something that's obligatory for all Muslims. 
So the actual details of fasting, well, in the dawn, you know, so before sunrise, Muslims will eat their morning meal, which can be called either suhoor or sahri. The sahri is kind of how I refer to it. It has various names, I guess, just depending on the dialect you speak. But you have your morning meal before sunrise. And at sunset, you will break your fast. And this is known as the iftari. You'll have your meal. During this time in between, you know, Muslims are not to eat any food and not to drink any water, not to have, you know, any, any food or drink. <coughs> and I know some Muslims who, you know, they can be, they, 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 you know, people can take it to whatever extreme. So some people would say that, like, you know, you can't even have a stick of gum, right? There's flavor in that. And, you know, that maybe that's too closely associated with food. Uh, I when I was growing up, I heard some people tell me like, oh, they don't even brush their teeth because, you know, the minty flavor of their toothpaste. And my approach to that, and maybe I'm wrong, but was always, you know, there's also in Islam this idea of your intentions. And I don't know about you kids, but when I brush my teeth, I have no intention of eating toothpaste. You know, I, I'm using that as a as a as a tool to help clean my mouth, clean my teeth, freshen my breath. Even gum, I don't know if I use that to stave off hunger. I don't know if I've ever done that, but gum I can understand. You know, there's some flavoring. You get a good feeling sensation when you chew it. But I say all that to say that, you know, during this time when you're fasting, like it is nothing, not even water. Okay, so no phys nothing physically going into your stomach, into your, into your, you know, into your belly, let's say. So, during this month, particularly with fasting during Ramadan, it's emphasized that a Muslim prays as often as possible, right? Like ideally, you know, five times a day, right? And not just the obligatory prayers, but the voluntary ones too. So those five salat you offer every day have some voluntary prayers kind of before and after you offer that one. Okay. And, and you know, maybe I'll make a video on that one day, but, you know, don't hold your breath. Um, and the idea behind this is that more prayer means more benefits, right? That, that, so, so I'll just give the example of myself this morning as of recording this. This is March 13th. Um, you know, last night and a couple nights now in a row, I had kind of set this intention with myself and God that, you know, God, if you, if I, if I wake up before my alarm, if I wake up kind of around 5 a.m., 5.30, you know, I, I'll offer some voluntary extra prayers, you know, and I recently learned, I was watching a podcast with uh, Lex Friedman and a Muslim gentleman, I, I forget his name, but just the idea that, again, during this month of Ramadan, and particularly praying during the night, is when God is closest to us, when God is seeking, you know, his, his followers, his devout believers who are awake at this time when others are asleep and they're praying. And there was a hadith mentioned that, you know, God is essentially saying, you know, to his believer, like, who, who, who is awake and praying to me that I might answer their prayer, that I might give them what they need, that I might alleviate some of their, their, their stresses and whatnot. And so, you know, just my own example. So this morning around 5.15, I probably woke up and, you know, 5.30, I finally crawled out of bed. I did the ablution. So I washed myself. I cleansed myself uh, physically. And then I offered some extra prayers before I had my, uh, my, my sahri meal, my, my morning meal which for myself is usually just a protein shake with you know, some other ingredients in there. It just makes it easy in the morning. So coming back to that main point, during this month of Ramadan, it's emphasized that you pray as often as possible and pray more than you would, you, you would normally do, right? And that's kind of the benefit of this month. And that's, again, coming back to that saying earlier that the gates of heaven are open and, and the, the doors to hell are shut, that you almost feel like it's easier to do that. To, it's easier to, you know, pray extra and, and you take on that sacrifice as part of your experience of Ramadan. During Ramadan, Muslims are also expected to avoid, you know, sinful activity and behavior, using foul language, consuming tobacco, and, you know, refraining from marital relations. You know, there are a variety of things that can, can, that can make your, your fast for that day invalid, right? Um, and so, you know, 
for myself and many Muslims, you know, watching the language you use, uh, sinful activity, you know, physical activity, let's say, sinful behavior, you know, so not speaking ill of others, not talking behind their back, which are already things you shouldn't do as a Muslim, but additionally, right, and sinful behavior in terms of, um, you know, there's a variety of things there. Um, so not only are you required to fast and pray, but you're also required to have that reflection where, you, where you're mindful of your behavior. Like, oh, like I'm kind of speaking poorly about this person. I'm talking behind their back. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I shouldn't be doing these things. So let's not do that because then my, my fast for the day is invalid. It doesn't count. Okay, depending on how bad it gets, obviously. Um, I, I would assume, right? I, can, I can't dictate that. That's obviously up to God. Um, and so, you know, this can be challenging, right? Think about it. You're waking up before the sun rises. You know, you're not drinking any water, not drinking very little water in the day, right? Maybe I have some in the morning, have some in the evening, not having a lot of food. For many people, we have work. You know, you have exams, you have stress of life and whatnot. Uh, as a teacher, you know, it's kind of funny. Some of my students asked me a couple of days before uh, Ramadan began. They said, hey, are you going to be grumpy? And I said, I hope not. You know, I wasn't really grumpy last year. I made sure to um, not kind of take that out on the students and not let myself get too agitated and remind myself that this is my burden. You know, it's not it's not anyone else's burden. This is my burden. And so I'm not allowed to then get snappy with students and, you know, get... Um, you know, a little short with them. Uh, you know, we're all kind of flawed and, you know, that does happen regardless of if you're fasting or not, that can happen. Um, and so far, you know, this is today's the third fast and things have been going very well. You know, subhanAllah, you know, thank God. Uh, things are going really well for me. Uh, last year, they went really well as, as well. I don't recall anything from myself in, in the classroom going wrong, too wrong. Um, but obviously, you know, once you hit that halfway mark, that's when some of that fatigue hits you where like you've been waking up now very early, it's dark, and maybe, you know, maybe you've been waking up in the middle of the night and deciding like, hey, you know what, like it's, it's, it's Ramzan, let's, like, let me just pray instead. Like I'll, I'm awake right now, I'll go do ablution, I'll, I'll pray a little bit in the night, I'll go back to bed. And maybe you're reading from the Quran as well, a little extra, the Quran is the holy book of Muslims. You know, so with the lack of sleep and... The, the lack of uh, food and, you know, let's say, you know, one thing I actually want to start working on for myself is being a little bit more modest with my meals because I know this morning I drank so much fluids I, I had to go pee like three different times in the morning alone. But, um, you know, some people look at the month of fasting as this time where, oh, I'm not going to be eating a lot. I'm going to lose weight. But then what do they do in the morning and in the evening? They're eating double what they would normally eat, maybe triple. So sometimes, you know, people are eating way above what they normally would eat. And, you know, it's for my own spiritual journey, I'm starting to question like, hey, is this really the point? You know, should I consume, you know, potentially two to 3,000 calories in two meals, maybe a little extra than I would eat so that I don't feel as hungry in the day, right? And and there is a part of, <clears throat> you know, the month of fasting of Ramadan where like eventually you just get this like kind of rock in your stomach where you're like, oh, I'm just hungry, I'm tired, I'm thirsty, you know, I'm feeling a little, perhaps a little delirious and, you know, it can be very challenging. So thank God that it's only, you know, one month out of the year, but um, all those things compound and, and, you know, while you're doing that, you're working on this spiritual connection between you and God where you're trying to avoid those behaviors that you wouldn't do normally. And, you know, my goal, in, inshallah, may God, in God willing, like it's that, using this month where, you know, the gates of heaven are open and, and, and those demons, kind of the, 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 the inclination to sin and is restrained that, you know, I can develop, you know, maybe new habits in certain areas of my life and, and, and you know, become a better person out of this. And that's kind of the goal of, um, you know, Ramadan and of fasting. You know, this is ideally why Muslims would fast and partake in this month, right? Because for many people, like particularly at the school, many people in, you know, Western culture, um, in modern culture, you know, they are flabbergasted. They're utterly shocked when you tell them that like, yeah, no, I haven't had water for like six hours. I haven't eaten anything for six hours and I won't, you know, not, not because a lightning bolt's going to come and strike me down and God's going to smite me, but because I intentionally won't do this, right? And I'm not saying that, you know, obviously if you're 
kind of indulging in sinful behavior that there might not be a negative consequence to that, whether it comes from God or just your own hand, but just getting to the point that it's, it's done willingly, right? You know, I, I had the choice this morning to wake up, to get out of bed, to, or sorry, rather to get out of bed only, um, and to go and have this meal and offer these prayers. And, you know, these are, these acts are done willingly, right? And, and that idea of avoiding sin is also done willingly. Okay. So with all that talk, you know, just before we conclude this section of, you know, what is fasting and why do Muslims fast? You should know that there are some exemptions for anyone who is traveling, who is ill, someone who is, you know, menstruating, someone who's pregnant, uh, you know, and women who are breastfeeding, you know, I should add women who are menstruating, pregnant and breastfeeding, you know, they're exempt from fasting, you know, and, and, and if you kind of think about it, it's pretty obvious, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm not a woman, I've never uh, menstruated, but I've met women who have and, you know, it's, it's challenging, it's, it's very stressful. Uh, pregnancies, you know, can be very harmful and you're breastfeeding, you know, the mother's duty in that moment and the, the woman's kind of situation in those moments is very different and and has different requirements. And so they're exempt, right? And, and you know, this is kind of like a religious thing. It, it's the exemption is given. You know, if you're traveling again, it's it's kind of adding that undue hardship and maybe making things difficult. It might make it difficult to, 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 to you know, follow that um, obligation. And so you're exempt, right? And if you're ill as well, um, you're exempt. And again, you got to keep in mind, all of these things are very much, I think, can be determined on an individual basis. So, for example, I live in Edmonton. You know, I'm technically traveling to another city for work, but I'm not going to use that as an excuse, right? Now, later in the month when I go down to Calgary, you know, I'll, and, and I'm there for two days, you know, I'll consider that as a traveling trip. And just given what I'm kind of hanging out with the friends that I'm hanging out with, you know, I won't fast, right? It'll, it'll probably make things a little bit complicated. And, you know, I, I won't necessarily feel guilty because, you know, in the faith that that allowance is given to you. And so, you know, a lot of these things are kind of up to the individual. Now, you should also know that if you do miss some of these fasts for these reasons, that it's kind of expected that you'll 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 fill in those days at some other point in the year, you know. And I don't know if there's much uh, kind of discussion on when, right? So, you know, are you going to wait until the days are long and they're a faster eighteen hours, or are you going to wait four, five, six months until it's winter and have like nice and easy fast, you know, twelve, thirteen hours? You know, I, I don't know what is said on that topic, so. So that kind of wraps up uh, the more formal part of my video, but um, you know, I'll just share also with my own journey uh, as a Muslim and, and with this kind of month of Ramadan and fasting. So for myself, you know, when I was young, I, I didn't fast a whole lot. Um, and with my particular religious community, they, they don't always advocate very young people to fast. I think the ages, generally speaking, the time period is around puberty. And I'd be curious to have a discussion on that with, with you know some of the people that are Muslim and just given the fact that the age of puberty has gone down and down, that's kind of been scientifically proven. But I you knew friends in uh, elementary school, they had mentioned like, oh, like, you know, so and so who's in grade four is fasting. And, and, you know, I wasn't at the time, whether I was in grade five, six, seven, eight, whatever. And I remember looking at them strangely, like, hey, you know, like, that's a young child, like, should they be doing that? You know, why would their parents make them do that? And what my community does advocate for is that regardless of, you know, what, once the kid's kind of old enough, get them involved into the process and the habit, you know, have them maybe wake up with you, offer that prayer in the morning and, and you know, join the family for the meal and join you for prayers. But, you know, throughout the day, you know, make sure they are eating, make sure they're drinking water because again, they're children, they're growing. Um, and, and so maybe the, 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 maybe God's mercy will be a bit different or the, the expectations from God are different as well for those children. So, you know, I didn't really fast when I was young and there was a period from about 21 to 25 or 19 to about 23 where I wasn't very closely tied to my religion and, you know, I didn't bother to fast. And so, you know, it has been a bit of an interesting journey. Um, I do recall when I was young, like watching my dad 
fast and seeing how, again, kind of the story I was telling earlier that, that you kind of sit there and wonder like, okay, like dad was at the mosque praying until 11, 1130. He woke up at 3.30 in the morning to have his breakfast and the fast, this is during the summer months, let's say, uh, you know, 3.30, 4 a.m., he's eating his breakfast and he's done eating by, at 4 and he's praying again at 4.30 and then he's going to work at 6.30. Like he's doing that for days on end. And I remember just being perplexed. It's like, because for me, that, that's kind of the most challenging part. It traditionally has been, fortunately, the last Ramzan and this Ramzan so far as an adult, as, as, as a man, you know, I've kind of just made that mental decision. Like, no, I'm fasting. So when that alarm goes off, I get up, you know, I, I, I proceed with my day. But, you know, watching my dad fast, and he worked a pretty intense labor job. Oftentimes he'd be outside and just wondering, like, you know, how is he doing that? Like, how is he managing, right? Like, he's getting next to no sleep. He's getting next to no food. He's drinking next to no water. And yet he's still working, you know, eight, 10 hour days and, and so that was very formative for me just growing up and, and seeing that. Um, you know, around 23, 24, 25 years old is kind of when I started getting a little bit more serious about my religion and my faith and, and my practice as well. And uh, I'll fully admit it was last year. I had two students that were Muslim. They uh, kind of before Ramzan, they were kind of bugging me and asking me about like, oh, Mr. K, are you going to fast? And I was like, well, I don't know, like, are you guys going to fast? And they said, yeah, we're going to try. And I said, sweet, let's all do it together, right? Like, let's do this together as Muslims. You know, we had the, the Block D class together, the two students and myself. And, and uh, you know, that ended up being me fasting for almost the entirety of the month. I was uh, traveling for a bit. Um, and it was just such a fascinating and interesting experience. And this year, I've kind of built on that, um, ob- let me practicing that obligation where, you know, I'm praying more, I'm listening to the Quran more, I'm, you know, trying to avoid some sin more and, and, and just being more in touch with God. And, and it has been very enjoyable, you know, get, kind of getting serious about this, this, this month of Ramadan and, and what I'm, you know, intending to do. Um, additionally, you know, like that character building and resilience that comes when, you know, a lot of my colleagues, friends at times will ask, like, you know, hey, don't you get hungry throughout the day? It's like, yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> sometimes I get hungry in the morning. Um, you know, sometimes it happens early on. You know, I get thirsty, I get a headache. And, you know, you just keep going, right? You build that resilience. Uh, you know, you build character when you're very hungry and you haven't had water and you're a little sleep deprived and you're agitated and, you know, people around you are annoying you, whether it's people on the road or, or students or teachers, you know, if you're a student and you're fasting, maybe your teacher is getting on your nerves and all these other things that happen, you know, somebody kind of does something a little bit slower and, and learning not to take it out on them, not to snap, not to get um, abrupt with them is, is just such good character development. And, you know, and then this isn't even talking about the spiritual side where, you know, now I like you know, fortunately over the last few months until I got sick kind of mid-February, I had developed a really good habit for a few months. I was praying three times a day and, and for many weeks I was praying five times a day, every day and kind of developing that connection with God and relying on God and and just being connected to all of that. Um, you know, continuing and furthering that development is, is, is very enjoyable for me so far, right? That spiritual connection feeling connected to, you know, my creator, my, my God, and, and to sort of, you know, give up those burdens to God while I go about my day. Um, you know, so, so, you know, my own journey, my own experiences, I, I, I do think that this fasting as a Muslim, like it really helps you build character, really helps you build resilience. Um, and, and, you know, that's very useful for life. And, and it helps you build that spiritual connection. And these things are incredibly beneficial, you know, wh- whether you agree or not. But for anyone who's Muslim, who has who has kind of participated and experienced this, I'm sure they can kind of attest to uh, some of the things that I'm sharing, you know, if they were to think about it and take the time to like kind of articulate it. But, you know, I'll wrap this video up with, you know, a bit of an invitation. Um, <clears throat> if you want to try it, yeah, wake up an hour before sunrise. 
you know, have some water, have some food, have a meal as you would and go about your day and just kind of experience what it's like to maybe not have food, you know, not have water, right? And that's part of, Ramadan, part of Ramadan is like being able to connect and relate to people with food insecurity as well, right? It's, it's a real blessing that I can just open up my fridge or go to a grocery store, fortunately I have the money and just buy food and nutritious food and lots of it, enough to gorge myself if I wanted to. And then I can go buy sweets and candies and treats and, and do that as well. But during that period where you're not eating, you know, to be able to connect with um, <clears throat> people around the world who experience that food insecurity and then also in like kind of feed your soul as well with that spiritual connection, you know. So I invite people to, you know, give it a try, whether it's waking up before sunrise and, and not eating and drinking things until as long as you can, right? If you can make it to sunset, excellent. If you can't, you know, at least you you, you tried, you know, what, and ask yourself, like, what did you learn from this experience, right? Or pick a time, 9 a.m. to, uh, you know, 6 p.m. Don't eat, right? A lot of people do. That's like intermittent intermittent fasting, right? They won't eat a meal until 2 or 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m. in the day. They'll reduce their eating window to about six hours in the day. You know, give these things a try. See what it's like. You know, see see what you're made out of, right? Because a lot of people, you know, they're like, oh, man, I can never do this. Maybe you could, right? And maybe you could learn to like it and enjoy it and look forward to that month. Um, So, you know, I'll finish up that invitation as these students are going bonkers outside in the hallway at lunch. Uh, I'll finish up this video with that invitation. So, hey, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And, um, you know, Ramadan Mubarak to all my Muslim friends. Um, Best of luck this Ramadan. Salam.